Hi guys, we welcome you uh, this week and it's so good to be back with you once again. Make sure that this moment is just you and God even as we enter into this time of worship. Into your hand I commit again with all I am for you
God that you need him more that you need him more than anything in your life because without him we are nothing he is the reason we're alive and we can never come to God and say we have had enough of you because we just need more of God every day in our lives and let's just make that our prayer this day
and speak to us this day, Father. Lord, even as we yearn for more of your presence, even as we yearn for more of you, Lord, if what we have in us is a spark, I pray that you will turn it into a flame, Father. Lord, if what we have in us is a flame, I pray you turn it into a fire, Father. Lord, and if it is just a small fire, I pray that this fire will spread, Father. Lord, because we just need more of you. We can't live today with what we had of you yesterday. And we can't live tomorrow with what we have of you today. But like your mercies are new every morning, I pray, Father, that this day you will just speak to us, even as we listen to your word, Father. I pray that you will just speak to us in a new way. You'll give us new perspective to just who you are and that we will experience more of you today. Just come and be a part of us. Just come and dwell in us, Father, that we experience more of you, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Good morning and it's good to connect with you once again and even if you're watching live or watching a pre-recorded we believe that God's word is going to touch you and challenge your life. Uh, the Bible speaks about the people of Israel and the journey that they took from Egypt to the promised land. Now that journey was to take them to a place that was supposed to be an inheritance, a place where they were to receive the land of promise. And as, a, as Christians, we believe that even for us, our time on earth is just temporary. And God has prepared for us something which is eternal. And we, like the people of Israel, are on a journey to a place that's much greater. There used to be a hymn that we sing. And these were the words of that hymn. It says, what a day it will be when my Jesus I will see. When I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace, when he takes me by my hand and leads me to that promised land, what a day, what a day that will be. I want to title my message, The Land of Promise. The Land of Promise. And we're going to look at this uh, through a series we're going to look at it over a few weeks and if you have your Bibles turn with me to Deuteronomy chapter 12 book of Deuteronomy chapter 12 
these are the decrees and laws you must be careful to follow in the land that the Lord the God of your ancestors has given you to possess as long as you live in that land now the first thing it says is be careful to follow be careful to follow after we've done something for a while sometimes we can become complacent or we can relax or drop our guard now for those of you who uh, play cricket or watch cricket you remember the the olden days when there should be test matches we don't get those too often now but in a test match with a five day match it's all about endurance and often you see a good batsman getting out just before a tea break or the lunch break or just as they come out of a break now it's just before that break or after the break that you've let your guard down you relax and you often get out i remember a few years ago i was uh, going up to mahiangane and, and we had gone with the team on a mission trip and and i had ridden my bike i had just bought this bike and had ridden it all the way back from mahiangane it was hours of riding and 5 minutes before i got home i met with an accident and i crashed my bike see i had come all that way and had so much concentration and just as i was entering my comfort zone i let my guard down and i found out later that most accidents happen very very close to your end destination because sometimes we relax at the last minute thinking that we've already made it we might not set out we might not set out to make a mistake on our journey but often when we relax and we become complacent we tend to make mistakes and here the people of god who have traveled for years traveled through the wilderness for years and they are just about to enter the promised land they are just about to enter this land flowing with milk and honey the the land that god had given them as an inheritance and after all these years you would have expected them to have known god they would have seen the miracles the plagues in egypt the red sea parting the the water coming out of the rock and they saw all these signs and wonders they experienced the presence of god and you would have expected them to have had a much deeper relationship with god but it was not the case and sometimes we can consider ourselves that we've been christians for 2 4 5 10 15 or even 30 years and we would think that oh wow after all of these things that we would have had a deeper relationship with god if you think that your years of knowing god amounts to your intimacy with god it doesn't you need to be careful you need to keep your guard up so it says be careful to follow now the hebrew word for that says to keep to watch to preserve to keep to watch to preserve be careful to follow the book of matthew chapter 7 verses 21 to 23 says this it says not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but only the one who does my will the will of the father who is in heaven many will say on that day lord did we not prophesy in your name and did we not drive out demons in your name and perform miracles then i will tell them plainly i never knew you i never knew you away from me you evil doers it says away from me you evil doers people who did things in the name of god people who perform miracles people who uh, cast out demons in the name of god and it says away from me you evil doers it is not everyone who says to me lord lord will enter the kingdom of heaven but the one who does the will of my father what is the will of the father i don't know now for those of you who are surprised and want it past if you don't know see i don't know that for you 
I don't know the will of the Father for you. I know it for my life. I can only account for my life. But I believe that all of us should seek the will of God for our own lives. It's about being connected to God. God wants to have intimacy with you. You don't need to go through another person. You don't need to go through another mediator. You need to connect with God. And even here at RYM, we constantly tell you that we want you to have a relationship with God. All that we do here during our time together is lead you to God. We want you to study the word of God. We want you to go to a deeper level of understanding his word and connecting with God through prayer. When we were younger, maybe in Sunday school, if you've attended, there used to be a song that says, read your Bible, pray every day. Read your Bible, pray every day, and it will let you grow. Very simple song, and sometimes we don't sing that too often as adults because it's a children's song. But it's actually that simple. It's actually that simple. Read your Bible, pray every day, and you will grow in intimacy with the Lord. This portion of scripture in Deuteronomy 12 that it says, Be careful to obey everything I have laid before you. In verse 28 of chapter 12, it says, there's a promise attached to it. There's something that follows our actions. And verse 28 says this, it says, Be careful to obey these regulations I am giving you so that it will always go well with you and your children after you. It says, if you do these things, be careful to obey because the reason God is telling you this, it will go well with you, with your life and the generation after you. Now, we get extreme Christianity. We either get the prosperity gospel or the hyper grace movement. And, and you've got extreme Christianity where on one hand it says everything is about prosperity. Everything is about prosperity. If you are not prospering, if you are not blessed, if you don't receive what you prayed for, that's a sin that you are not living right. I don't believe that. The Bible contradicts that belief. But on the other hand, there are others that embrace poverty and don't believe that God can provide. They don't believe that God can heal. They don't believe in the supernatural miracles. And I don't believe that either extreme is good. God wants to bless you. God wants you to have a great life. God said, be fruitful and multiply. And the scriptures in, in many parts talks about it. It speaks about the joy unconditional, that there's a joy that's going to rise up from within you. It doesn't say, oh, get into depression, be sad, everything is bad. No, it says even through tough times, that there's a joy that's going to flow out of you. I believe that God wants to bless you to be a blessing to others. And we see through scripture that even through tough times, that the people of the Lord prospered not to just be blessed for themselves, but to be a blessing to others. I want to thank even the RYM team that has stepped up during this season to be a blessing to those around them. I remember last year during the Easter tax, some of our leaders who stepped in and, and supported the work that was going on, the reconstruction, the rebuilding. And even in this season, I want to thank all the young people who gave off their time, who prayed, who gave offerings, who, who came and said, we want to bless somebody else. And because of what you did, many families have been blessed. The word of Lord says, be careful to obey all these regulations I'm giving you so that it will go well with you and the children after you. Now verse 2 to 4 says this. Verse 2 to 4 says this. It says, destroy completely all the places on the high mountains, on the hills and under every spreading tree where the nations you are disposing worship their gods. Break down their altars, smash their sacred stones and burn the Asherah poles in the fire. Cut down the idols of their gods and wipe out their names from those places. It says tear down the altars, tear down the other altars. 
The second point I want to illustrate to you is the Bible says, destroy completely the altars that are not from God. Destroy completely the altars that are not from God. What is an altar? It's a structure on which an offering is made to a deity. A structure on which an offering is made to a deity. Now the Hebrew word for altar uh, means to slaughter. The Greek word has a slightly bit different translation. It is to sacrifice. The Hebrew word says to slaughter and the Greek word, the root word says to a place of sacrifice. The altars were a place where the divine encounters the human world. And altars were a place of exchange, of communion, a place of influence. But every altar that is built is not acceptable by the Lord. Every altar that is built is not acceptable by the Lord. Just because you are making a sacrifice, it does not mean that it is acceptable to God. Now we see this in the story of Cain and Abel. Cain and Abel both offered sacrifices, but the Lord looked in favor of Abel's sacrifice, but did not look in favor of Cain's. We see this in the illustration of uh, Elijah and the prophets of Baal, that uh, Elijah's offering was accepted, where the prophets of Baal, all of them were cutting themselves and crying out and telling uh, God to respond, but he didn't. Amos chapter 5 verse 22 says this. Amos chapter 5 verse 22 says this. It says, I hate, I despise your feasts. I cannot stand the stench of your solemn assemblies. He's talking to the people of God. And he says, I hate, I despise your feasts. I, I can't stand the stench of your assembly. Even though you offer me burnt offerings and grain offerings, I will not accept them. Isaiah chapter 1 verse 11 says this, The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me? The multitude of your sacrifices, what are they to me? I have more than enough burnt offerings of rams and of fattened animals. I have no pleasure in the blood of bulls and rams and goats. I have no pleasure in the offering that you are making. What is it to me? See, physically, everything might look the same from the outside, but God is looking at that which is inside. Physically, everything looks the same in the outside, but God is looking at the inside. We need to pay attention to the attitude of our heart even while we come to offer our sacrifices. God says, when your heart is right, I will respond. When your heart is right, I will respond and I will get involved actively in what you are doing. Noah built an altar and offered a sacrifice and God looks at it and he found that aroma pleasing unto him and he says never again will I destroy every time an offering is made every time a sacrifice is made God says I will respond but I don't care what it looks like on the outside I am looking at your heart I am looking at your heart's condition now when it comes to the New Testament, we don't offer a physical sacrifice anymore. We don't need to kill animals, we don't need to offer that because we believe that Jesus died for us and His sacrifice has made atonement for our sins. We don't need to do that anymore. But the Bible says this in Romans chapter 12 verse 1. It says, therefore I urge you, brothers and sisters, in the view of God's mercy, in the view of what God did for us, to offer our bodies a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing unto God. It says, when we understand what Jesus did for us, when we understand that we are saved by grace, we don't need to bring an offering, we don't need to make atonement for our sin anymore. But it says, when we understand that, it says, offer your whole life as a living sacrifice. Psalms 139 verse 23 and 24 says this. 
it is understanding that that's hard to do understanding that we fall short understanding that we are not perfect the psalmist says search me o lord and know my heart test and know my anxious thoughts test and know the thoughts that stress me out test and know the thoughts that bring guilt upon my life even when i fall even when i fall short of your regulations it says test and know my thoughts see if there is any wicked way in me see if there is any hurtful way in me and lead me to the path everlasting it is lead me to a path everlasting and even during this season i want to tell you that sometimes unknowingly we would have let our guard down unknowingly we would have not paid attention to some things that are important and i i i i want to tell you that it's of significance that we come back to the word of lord i know schools are about to restart i know that uh, workplaces are going to go back and soon we are going to get caught up in our lifestyle again we are going to get caught up in our regular lifestyle again and maybe already you are overwhelmed by the amount of things that you think you need to catch up to but i want to tell you i want to challenge you don't lose perspective of that which is eternal don't lose perspective in your relationship with god search me o lord search me thoroughly and know my heart say god test my heart and see whether there is any evil anxious thought in it and lead me back to you lead me back to you in the first part of this message i want you to focus on those two points be careful to obey be careful to obey because that will be a blessing to you personally and those around you and the generations to come and also ask the lord are there any altars you built in your life are there any things that you have prioritized in your life even during this season that are not from god say god i am coming back to a heart of worship i'm coming back to a heart of worship maybe you've never been a christian in your life you don't know what it's about or you've been a, a namesake christian and but you don't have an active relationship with god i want to lead you to a personal relationship with god we're not asking you to get connected with our youth group we're not asking you to even get connected with our church see what's going to save you is your relationship with god and if that's you i just want you to bow your heads for a moment and repeat this prayer after me say lord our heavenly father i thank you for your goodness i thank you because the bible says that you love me lord i don't know you Lord I don't have a deep relationship with you but today I want to enter into one Lord if you are real speak to me I pray that you'll challenge my heart I pray that you will help me to understand your word In Jesus name we pray Amen. Father Lord, I just pray blessing over everyone connected today. I pray Lord that even as this season unfolds and there are many challenges that still unfold in this season, Lord that you'll lead us to a place of hope, a place of rest through your word. Lord you say Lord in your word be careful to obey the instructions you have given us in the word of God that it will go well with us and those after us so i pray lord your word will be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path 
Father, I pray, Lord, that even as we connect and have fellowship and have one-on-one -on -one discussions, Lord, Lord, that even in this season that we will grow to a deep intimacy with you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you.